guys it's your girl jojo and i'm back mm -hmm. i've been missing for a while because you know life but i'm back and i'm here with a new series today is true crime thursdays yes 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 and this is where i'll be sitting down with you and telling you about a true crime story if you know me i love true crime stories i love to watch true crime channels so this is what i'm gonna do and if you know me you know i'm obsessed with billy syrian so i'll be doing my makeup at the same time so today we are talking about the case of nathan leopold and richard lube this case gets kind of graphic so i'm gonna have to drop a warning viewer discretion is advised this is not from this is not for children this is for mature audiences only um it includes some graphic detail about a crime scene and all that stuff and yeah so let's get started so this case starts with two wealthy students who went to the university of chicago in chicago illinois so i'm gonna give you a bit of a backstory on the two main people in this case nathan leopold and richard Lube. so we're gonna start with nathan leopold so nathan frudenthal leopold jr was born November 11th, 1904, to two wealthy German Jew immigrants. Um, they had a freight and kind of like transport business, so they made a lot of money. And at a young age, Nathan was bullied, and it was believed, it was alleged, that he was sexually assaulted by a governess um, at the age of 12. He was known to be very smart, and he grasped things at a really young age and because of this it was very hard for him to make friends and this continued on into his later years um, in school so eventually his family moved to a very exclusive neighborhood in chicago called kenwood this is where nathan would go on to harvard private school um and as I said before, he was very smart. He grasped things at a young age. So it was no surprise that he went to college at the age of 15. So his main interest was ornithology, which is the study of birds. And he went on to the University of Chicago in 1920. And this is where he met his good old friend, Richard Loeb. Okay, so Richard. Richard was born June 11th, 1905. He was the son of a wealthy Jewish lawyer. He had four, three other siblings because he was the third of four. Um, he was known to be very smart. He skipped several grades, but even though he was very smart and a very popular child, he became a well-established thief at a young age. Unfortunately, he had this fantasy of becoming this master criminal and he will go through all lengths to achieve it. So Richard, his crime started with minor family theft, but then that escalated into shoplifting, vandalism, and even some arson. He didn't miss on anything, even some arson baby, even some arson. He was admitted into the University of Chicago at the age of 14, um, but unfortunately in 1921, he was transferred to the University of Michigan. But somehow, even though he had some struggles with alcoholism and he had a spotty academic record, he graduated the college's youngest student, you know? Like, <sighs> blows my mind. But eventually he went back to the University of Chicago for some graduate work. And that is where he reconnected with Leopold, Nathan Leopold. And they deepened their connection. Eventually it turned sexual and, you know, he started involving Nathan in his criminal pursuits because he wanted to basically put out the perfect crime. He wanted to be in the tabloids and to be recognized for putting out that perfect crime and get away with everything. I mean, everything. So, 
they hatched this perfect plan because after a while nathan got tired of just following him around and doing all these petty crimes and not doing it getting anything out of it so they made this idea up that they would kidnap someone get the victim's father to pay a ten thousand dollar ransom fee they get them to leave them under the train tracks on the south side and they just collect the money and escape that simple right that simple that simple mm. they thought on may 21st 1924 the two rented a car and they decided they were gonna drive through the streets of kenwood and look for their perfect victim so some sources say they were driving around for two hours and they couldn't find their perfect victim until Richard pointed out the perfect victim, which so happened to be 14 year old Bobby Frank. And coincidentally, it was Richard Lube's cousin and his across the street neighbor. They played tennis together a lot. I mean, he was over at Richard's house a lot. So because of this and the fact that their family, Richard knew that his fam that Bobby's family was loaded and that his father could pay the ransom fee. So Richard being his cousin decided that he would be the one to lure him in the car. So they then turned the car around and they pulled up next to Bobby and Richard began to try to lure Bobby into the car and he basically like was telling him like I have to talk to you about something and da 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 so he's like okay fine I'll get in the car um that's fine sure he was finally get, able to get him in the car and this is when they start talking obviously and Bobby looks away from his cousin who then goes behind his chair to get his chisel and he begins to beat Bobby with it. This is when Bobby turns around and tries to protect himself. Um, but unfortunately, the last hit gashed his skull wide open. And all of the blood went all over the floors, all on Nathan's pants. It was everywhere. Excuse the noise, y'all. I live in a noisy neighborhood. I'm facts. Anyways, so Richard obviously thought, like, okay, he should be dead by now. He got a lash to the skull, bleeding out, but he wasn't. So Richard decided he would gag him. So that's what he did. And Bobby was finally dead, unfortunately. And they. Mm, burned his face and genitals off so that he wouldn't be recognizable um, or identified and they plotted his body in a culvert um, near Wolf Lake um, and they went off and mailed the ransom note to his father but unfortunately they didn't know that his parents had already contacted the police and I don't know how much days after but a passerby actually saw the body and called the police and the body was identified. So for people who wanted the perfect crime, they weren't so clean. Um, the police actually found a pair of glasses at the scene that were traced back to Nathan Leopold. And so 10 days after the boy was murdered they both actually confessed and had to demonstrate to the state's attorney how they carried out the murder so thanks a lot their parents heard the most expensive attorney his name was clarence darrell and he was known to be really good at his job and accomplished at his job um and his goal was to get the boys to not get the death penalty because 
that's one thing he didn't agree with and he didn't want obviously the boys to go down with a death penalty obviously but obviously the boy's family wanted that like you kill my son you kill my son well, the people of the town were obviously disgusted and slightly amused by this case because they were like you just kill because of what the thrill of it but you did this to a poor boy and let alone one of their cousins not one not one to put in but anyways um so the boys pleaded guilty which was good for them because that would allow the judge to actually make the decision instead of a jury um clarence didn't want public um feelings to get into this case in trial nathan would go on to oh fuck up i'm hot I'm sweating so excuse the sound of the fan I hope you can hear me but excuse the sound of the fan I'm hot and I'm sweating and this is not working out but Barbie this is hot y'all Barbie this is hot but right in trial Nathan would go on to say that they actually committed these crimes for the thrill of the experience and he also mostly committed them because he was in love with Richard and he would do basically anything to make him happy, you know, at the end of the day. Um, he also went on to say in an interview that the thirst for knowledge is highly commendable, whether it inflicts pain or not. He also went on to say that a six-year-old boy is justified for pulling the wings off of a fly if by doing so, he learns that without wings, the flight's helpless. I don't know why he used that to justify his crime, but you know, go off, sir. Um, so obviously, their lawyer decided to take the smart way out, and he was like, they're mentally insane. The, you know, the insanity plea always works. So he obviously had to get tests from various like characters. I think it was one for the stay and two for the journeys i'm not sure but yeah so in trial their lawyer actually gave a uh, an incredible speech which lasted a total of three days some sources say three days some say 12 hours i don't know if that's because it was like split up please stop arguing Damn. i don't know if that's because the days were probably like split up in court but yeah it was long and up to this day people think this is what really what did i get a minute this is what really convinced the judge not to give them the death sentence so on september 10th 1924 nathan leopold and richard lube were both sentenced to life in prison plus 99 years for the kidnapping and murder of Bobby Frank. Woo. Well, in 1936, Richard Liu was actually urged slashed and killed by a fellow inmate. Um, it was alleged that he was trying to sexually assault this inmate. So, yeah, that's tough. That's hard. And of course, Nathan Leopold. He actually was paroled on in 1958, I think it was, and he moved to Puerto Rico where he met his wife and he unfortunately passed away 10 years later after this marriage of a heart attack. <laughs> oh, the sun is finally peeking through your anyways guys that's it for today's video um tell me your opinions on this story do you think they should have gotten the death penalty or do you think they got what they deserve with a year and 99 i'm saying a year life and 99 years uh i personally think it was fine i'm not really one to believe in the death penalty but you know to each their own um i'll leave everything i put on my face in the description below i'll leave links to 
everywhere i got my stuff from if you guys want to like do your own research please drop in the comments if you want to see more of these videos what cases you want to see all that i'm sweating so i'm a peace out guys <laughs>